Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends, my name is Kat, and this is Moni. Hey, guys. And we are your co-hosts. On behalf of the Fake Ass Book Club, a.k.a. The Bad Podcast, we welcome you aboard the mothership. We are sending you on a non-stop trip directly into the shenanigans of this podcast. If this is your first time, please listen carefully until the end of this announcement. However, if you are a frequent flyer, you may skip directly to the show and enjoy. The Fake Ass Book Club has a running time of about one hour. We will be ascending to an altitude of whatever cocktails we have available. Also, we most likely will be talking at the speed of roughly 100 miles per minute. When the fab neon sign illuminates, make sure your headphones are plugged in, your devices are charged, and your pearls are properly clutched. Yes, Lord. As this podcast contains explicit language, strong opinions, and adult content. Individuals under 18 are not advised to listen and do so at their own risk. And we would also like to remind you that this is a fake-ass book club. So, uh... If you're an avid reader, or if you never plan to pick up a book in your life, this is still the podcast for you. The only must is that you show up. To any and all haters aboard, you already know where the emergency exit is. Bye, Felicia. If this podcast is not for you, we understand. However, tampering with, damaging, or trying to destroy our positive vibes are strictly prohibited by FAB bylaws, which clearly state good vibes only. Before takeoff, you will find information about us and this podcast at our website at thefabpodcast.com. We strongly suggest that you follow us across social media and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you have any questions or want to reach out, please don't hesitate to email us at thefabpodcast at gmail.com. We know you have a choice in podcasts, and on behalf of the Fab Podcast, we would like to thank you for choosing us. So with that, buckle up, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Hey, y'all. This is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey, Kat. And, and this, this is, is the, the Fake, Fake Ass Book Club. <laughs> Wait, can we both say it or no? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Fake Ass Book Club. This is your girl, Moni. Hey, Moni. I'm Kat. Hey, Kat. <laughs> Listen, so... Today's episode is, I'm super excited to talk to you guys about this book. Um, it is called Rabbit. Um, and it, I mean, we're touching on everything um, in oh. this book. We're talking about teenage oh, pregnancy. Yeah. We're talking about um, the crack epidemic. Yep. Um, just all kinds of juicy stuff. So, but before we get into the actual book, we want to do a dedication today. Yeah. Um, and I want to dedicate this episode for anybody listening today. We want to shout you out and thank you for doing that. Also, I wanted to shout out and dedicate this episode to single moms, single parents, anybody struggling out there, um, and specifically anybody who's ever survived the crack epidemic. That shit was terrible. Yeah, we were just talking about that earlier, uh, about how um, when you're going through something, you don't even realize you're going through it. It's just what's happening. 100%. And just about how amazing that is. And that also makes me think about, too, like we're dedicating this to single parents. I really want to dedicate this to my great-grandmother, so my fraternal grandmother's mother who raised four kids during the depression oh, yeah. um <laughs> like it's hard during the best i mean it's hard during the best of times so i can't imagine that yeah because she had to get away from her abusive husband so wow so shout out to her yeah you know, dedicated shout to out all to, the real ones um yeah because that, that couldn't have been easy I always Definitely. think about that when I'm having a hard time. I'm like, well, it ain't that bad. It's not that <laughs> bad. Yes. Well, okay, so should we just jump right in? Yes. Should we talk about the book? Okay, so the book yes. that we're talking about oh, today. Oh, wait, let's, um, who, oh, yeah, who's the author? So the, the book that we're talking about today is called Rabbit, and it's a memoir by Patricia Williams. Um, and I guess Rabbit is her nickname, so... And now um, she goes by Miss Pat. Miss Pat, yes. Yeah, which, we I just never, start calling her Miss Pat because she says she doesn't even like being called Rabbit anymore. I, I can imagine why. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would yeah, you want to use that. Yeah, be... leave that behind you and rebrand yourself. But it 100%. immediately, like, and also too, it was ghost written by Janine Amber. Yes, I think that was correct. Yes, but yeah. So this, yeah. so I never even heard of Rabbit or Miss Pat or anything like that. I think you had mentioned her to me, asking had I listened to her podcast, which. 
I do now. Like, yeah. her podcast is really good. She's hilarious. <laughs> she's so funny, and she's it's hosted by, of course, Miss Pat, and then she's got two other co-hosts, a black guy named Dion and a white guy named, they call she him white, white, boy Chris. Chris. <laughs> white, white Boy Chris. White Boy Chris. <laughs> and um, it's, it's so interesting hearing all their different perspectives and just... You would never picture the three of them together ever in, in a room. Life, no. Like, and it's it's crazy funny. Yeah. But yeah, I finally was like, okay, I need to read her book. And so this podcast was a perfect excuse perfect. to be like, finally, I can go through and read her book. I'm super glad you introduced me to her. I'm so enjoying um, oh, you're welcome. her podcast. And I love um, the book, too. So um, it's a memoir, and it's about 227 pages. And I want to say it took me... It didn't take that long to read. I felt like it was a really mm-hmm. easy read. So I, I started it. I read for a few hours, maybe two or three days. Um, and that's like not me being able to. I mean, I need y'all to understand I don't have the kind of life that allows <laughs> me to just sit and leisurely read fucking books. <laughs> like I'm actually really trying to get these books in and like actually read them and make it a priority. So, um, but yeah, it didn't take long because this was to me, it was like fast paced. Like it drew me in um, pretty much right away. And A lot of what was happening, I felt like, was super... I mean, it was entertaining, but it was heartbreaking. It was hilarious. Like, I cannot stress how hilarious uh, Miss Pat is. She's so funny. It reminds me how... I don't know where I heard this. I'm always reading or listening to something, but how basically, um, like, comedy, um, tragedy, love, hate, they're just two sides of the same coin. You know what? I agree with that. and Because I had thought about... Like, what's the opposite of love? And I don't know that it's hate because isn't that indifference? Like, if you really I've love somebody. That, but I don't know, man. Hate is, like, that's when you go out of your way to destroy something. Like, that's true, though, <laughs> but you'd have to fucking care. You do. You have my to point. care. Like, you, you have, have to give to a care. fuck. Because if you think about it, I, I have loved my husband. He's literally the only man I've ever loved in my life. And so if our scenario changed to where it was like, okay, he wants to, you know, I don't know, like, he did some fuck shit that mm-hmm. just blew up our whole lives. Like, that love has to go somewhere. Oh, that you know what feeling, I'm saying? That, that energy, emotion. that energy yeah. that he, gener- you know, that Ooh, you generate for somebody, it just transfers into a, like, I don't know if it's hitting second gear or whatever the fuck <laughs> you want to call it. But, um, yeah, because to me, like, if you hate somebody, you there's, you know, there's some emotion behind it. And I feel like the opposite of love would be just indifference, complete indifference. Like, I give zero fucks. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, that's being kind of totally the theme ignored. of the book too, because she's talking about when she when we get to it, and she's talking about like the father of her like first two children and how she thought she loved him oh my God. and was in love with him. Because that's the other thing too. It's like, is that really love? Because okay, I mean, I have been married and like have my you know blown up over some fuck shit, and it's like, but I never really hated him. Like sometimes you hate what they're putting you through, but at the same time, it never. Like, it almost had to be a, I can't even think about you. Like, it goes to that point. And well, she talks about now, she still talks to her baby daddy. Like I know, I, I was hearing her saying that, and she <laughs> said he hates her guts. Like, you have the fucking audacity. The Can we talk about yes. this motherfucking yes. Let's talk let's about this, show. Because I don't know if his name God is Derek damn. or Daryl. It don't matter what this nigga's name is. <laughs> <laughs> I think Fuck she him. calls him Derek in the book, because I think she changed names in the book. Let's call him Chester. Chester, for the, <laughs> the child molester. The motherfucking um, molester. Derek, and once again, it's a very familiar story, because he was fucking everybody and had multiple people knocked up when he had her knocked up. Let's talk about how they motherfucking met. Okay. Right? Can we talk about that? Okay, let's because go this all shit the way is back. disgusting. Let's man. go back. Oh, wait. Do we have a description of it? Do we yeah, pull you that? You know what? I can, you know what? I can read the back yes, of her book. So that. just to give yeah, you guys a general feeling. And so forgive me because, you know, I do like know I how to read. Together. But also, very rarely am I being asked to read out loud. So here we go. It says, born and raised Sorry. in Atlanta at the height of the crack epidemic, Patricia Williams, a.k.a. Miss Pat, watched as her mother struggled to raise five children on charity, cons, and petty crimes. At the age of seven, Pat, known as Rabbit, was taught to roll drunks for money. I never heard that phrase before. Roll drunks? Yeah, I never heard that before. I think I saw, like, maybe an Iceberg Slim novel or something like that. Okay, see, I yeah. digress. That's just I about, about that they're just stealing. Okay, yeah, so she stole from <laughs> drunk people. Um, at 12, she was targeted for sex by an older man. By 13, she was pregnant. By 15, Pat was the mother of two. Alone at 16, Pat was determined to make a better life for her children. But with only an eighth grade education, she had limited options. She learned quickly that hustling and humor were her only tools she had to survive. 
Rabbit is an unflinching memoir of cinematic scope, wisdom, and unexpected humor that gives us a rare glimpse of what it's really like to struggle and thrive in America. And um, that actually kind of like, yeah, that puts it in, in crazy perspective. I mean, she grew up in, I mean, she was poor. You know what I mean? Not like just, I had government cheese poor, but like, you know, they were the dusty kids at school. Okay. She jokes about that. I, uh, in Okay, let's go to the... I'm sorry. Yeah, it's where so do you much, want to start? There's so much to pull from. Okay, I'll, I'll start with, like, a part that was really touching to me. Okay. It was her relationship with her grandfather. Because yes. he ran the... Uh, basically, like, the illegal liquor store or liquor house. in Because they were in the country. Right. Like, and he actually just showed, sold moonshine. He didn't trust anybody. She talked about how... What was amazing about her is the fact she's able to tell these amazing stories because she has incredible recall. Like, her memory, especially since she was, like, functionally illiterate for a while. And I noticed this with people who are illiterate. They have, like, really good memories because, like, they wow. can't—they have to basically just um, memorize things by rote. You're not actually reading. You're just— Right. You're, like some yeah. <laughs> And once Hate again, to bring him up, but he does kind of. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's a Mark a Kelly similar shit going down. pattern and stuff like that. But she can read now, so it's not like that. Yeah. But um, but it just for me, I, I like that because I had a similar kind of. Cause she was kind of her grandfather's favorite. You could tell by right. the way that they wrote and stuff. She was the youngest out of her mother's kids. And I love the fact too that her grandfather didn't even call her by her name. He that just was funny. Called was like, each kid by the number in which they were born. So she was just Mildred, baby girl. <laughs> Mildred baby girl. Yeah, baby girl. And like, so, and then Mildred's baby, or like first baby. And, you know, he yeah. just called them by his the daughter's mom's name. And, and the that's order. what I wondered, too, was about her grandmother, like her mother's mother. Like, oh, she yeah, never about talked about I'm like, what the hell? I wonder if her grandfather killed her. Because he did end up going to jail for shooting that lady. Yeah, he did. So she was talking shit. He, <laughs> yeah, you can see talking he has a short shit, view. So I'm like, I wonder if it's just kind of like one of those things where I notice like usually with... I mean, people in general, when there's a trauma like that, people just don't talk about it. That's true. So I'm, I am i don't know. I'm speculating, but because they never mention the woman. And no. it's really weird that you talk about your grandfather and not your grandmother. But they had a sweet relationship. You could tell he favored her. And I like that, too, because my grandfather ran uh, like a, a bar. And he was my favorite. Like, yeah. he was just, and I could say, like... Old black men be the best, though, right? <laughs> I feel like they're so scarce uh, now. Like, that's um, my that thing. Like, I, I love that energy and stuff like that. And it was it was really sad and stuff, too, because once her grandfather went to da jail, like, yeah. their whole life, they lost all their security because it turns out her mother was an unstable drunk. Yeah, that was, I mean, and it... To the point where, like, her mom was, like, taking money to, you know how, and I'm sure, I mean, maybe people can relate to this, being, like, at a black event and then um, your aunt or your mom being like, you dance, you know, show them that dance y'all, you know, yes. did. It would be stuff like that. But then, you know, you're getting, somebody's giving you money specifically to have your daughters dancing, even though it makes them super un uncomfortable and they're making comments about their bodies. We're talking, like, eight-year-old little girls. Yeah, they were real. I think she was younger than that, Probably, wasn't she? I don't, I'm just going with eight. That was, okay. I don't know, somewhere in there. She was, Either like, way, real, was real young. Because, yeah, she had her, yeah, like, and, like, when everybody would be drunk, she'd have them go in there and steal from yeah. them. First of all, what to me, I kept thinking her mom has this, like, Donald Trump energy to me as far as just like <laughs> and, and the enterprising spirit of just like a crackhead or somebody who not even specifically a, a crackhead but anybody who's in a position where they're like I gotta make this happen you, raw you capitalism become, yeah that's street capitalism that's exactly what I was thinking about the ingenuity that's I mean you are recruiting your eight your, I'm saying eight because she, I think she was like five I want to say like she was like real little somewhere between five because it was before she was going to school Okay, yeah. So but she was super young, though, but yeah. I mean, these, so like, this was like an after hours joint that basically never closed and they lived there. So, <laughs> you know, there's the kind of drunks who go home after they've been drinking. There's the kind who, who you know, you wake up in the morning, their ass is still there, their wig is half on the floor or whatever. And, um, you know, her mom was like, okay, I need you to go and get his wallet out of his pocket and bring me the money. And I just, I mean, and it's I, sad because it's like you just do what your parents tell you to of do. Of course, like that's, and it, the whole point is like you have your kid do it because if you get caught doing it, you're, you know, you I might can pretend die. to whip your ass. <laughs> like, oh my god, I can't really believe stealing this. from people is I that's mean, real sketchy, man. Like you might not want to, yeah. Like, well, and I think maybe you know, you know, you might be a little bit more forgiving if it's a kid or something like that. But yeah, I just felt you're like less likely to shoot a kid. But that I means there's lots of people imagine. still would. I just, you know, I can't imagine being at a place where I felt like that was going to be 
you know, like that was my best shot. Option. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So, But I wonder what happened to her mom, too, because she, we, we just pick up a course, like, when our protagonist story, Miss Pat's story jumps off, but it's like, how did you end up with five kids? Like, where did... The mom, Because she yeah. never talks about her dad, either. True. You know what? That's one of the things to me that's always interesting in stories. It's like, who's missing? And it's like, so there's two people. Like, once again, in my life, my grandmothers have always played, like, huge roles. Right. So, so like, it's like, where's she at? And especially in the South. Yeah, like, true that. You know, and the fact, too, that, and I mean, it's, not, it's, it's unfortunately not surprising, like, you don't know who her dad is and she don't talk about him or anything. But it's kind of like, that's... <sighs> Only to reference the fact that, like, you know, she told uh, Pat at some point, like... Um, like a man doesn't love you unless he's hitting he you or you. beating you. you oh, know and what that I mean? white so people like are better get, than you. And, oh, that fucked me up. <laughs> Can you admit, don't look at them in the eyes. They're better than you. Like, just, these are the mantras, though. Like, this is the this is your she legacy. She said she didn't realize that until she moved to Indiana uh, and started living around white people that it's like, oh, these people are just, okay. Listen, I... I <laughs> They're as I mean, raggedy I, as me. <laughs> more so. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, this, they're not sweet out here. I, I mean, and we know because we we also, I mean, she happens to live in this in this city. Um, Like I said, she's from Atlanta originally, but she moved here with her husband because I think his job. Allison's, which once Allison's again, very relatable content. Like, sure. I have family members who worked at Allison's. Yeah. So. I think we all did. My, I think. Exactly. Yeah, like, for sure. Like, like and that's a Midwest, that's a Midwest right. shit. Like. Uh, factory jobs. Shout um, out to UAW. Yeah, man. I know, and all the unions and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Thanks for all the insurance. Ma- tell you about. Thank you for that GM discount. Right. What up, GG? <laughs> That's why unions are important. They're yeah. not the. They they can be corrupt, but unions are important. That's why I was able to get an education. Man, I'm telling you. Well, it was just it was a roller coaster. I do feel like um, it's not one of those books that you read that it takes a while to get into. No, she's instantly off top. pulling you in, and even though a lot of the content I feel like in the book is heavy because you're like, wait, she was getting she was molested her, with her sister. With like, her God sister. Damn. She was she had a baby when she was how old? And she got he started fucking her when she was twelve, got her pregnant at thirteen, and she had a baby at fourteen. And then oh I don't know God. what you were doing at twelve. I was twelve is what, pregnant. sixth grade, seventh grade? Is that when we 12, met? I was in seventh grade. Yes. <laughs> I was what 12 when about I to meet you. You were having a full on affair with like a grown ass man. But you know what's fucked up? Somebody, somebody that we both know that kind of, I mean, oh, well, he I was know that grown, happened to a lot of people. But though. he was like 17 or 18. We were 13. And no, I mean, but I mean, I know that that's happened to people though, like lots of people. And like, I don't know if you remember this too. I like just going to the mall, like grown ass men will approach oh, you all the time. Percent, 100 <laughs> percent. I remember. Um, and my daughter was asking me the other day, she's like, well, I want to go to the mall by myself. I'm no, like, ma'am. no. No. no, I will be there in some shape or form. Like, just know that. Like, I always let my kids know, you never know when I'm going to pop up. I used to do that all the time with my son, too, at school. Like, just randomly. Like, on some, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, here. I'm in the building. And yeah. also, too, to let the school know that, too. Like, you never know when I'm going to show up. So. Yeah, that's actually really good advice. <laughs> just <laughs> randomly um, pop up. Yeah, I mean, just sidebar, I worked at a um, daycare for, I, yeah, maybe like a, not even a year. You yeah, know, I it was like a that. summer. Yeah. and. You know, I got paid under the table. The lady was super <laughs> Don't say nice. That. I mean, no, no, no. I pay taxes. Excuse I mean, me. law abiding. I law abiding. Prompt. Everything was every, on the up and up, uh, um, except for her <laughs> actual business. But I just remember because I maybe I was nineteen or something, and I remember the state was coming in to inspect her daycare. And, you know, you can only have so many kids per adult, mm-hmm. which we were well beyond <laughs> because they didn't want to stop the, you know, daycare checks of that course. were coming from the state or whatever. So she had the other lady pack up her van with like 11 kids Jesus. and take them to her home. Now, me as a person who did not have kids was sitting there like, so you mean to tell me you're going to take all these fucking kids? They don't all have car seats. Mm-mm. You're jam packed. You can get into an accident. Mm. Who? What molesters live at your home? <laughs> I would have been livid. Do you understand me? And I did have, there was actually, um, uh, one of the parents popped up. Mm-hmm. And she was coming to pick up her kids early. And one of them was there with me. And the other one was with the other at lady. The, and she cussed that lady out as she should on uh-huh. that front porch. And I was like, when I have kids, I am popping the fuck up. There is no, I, Wherever I they mean, are. I mean, I wasn't anywhere near considering having children. But I thought, <laughs> if I have to leave my kids with other people, they're going to know that I'm just going to show up in here because... You never know what is going on. So, yeah, I think that's solid advice. But <laughs> Yeah, just pop up randomly. Um, pop up on the ass. It's so funny because I think on an episode of Miss Pat, um, 
Because, you know, she... It's she, called the pat down, the right? Pat like down. her, It is so funny, though. And because she always talks about... Cause she, at some point, she's always got somebody's babies because, oh once God. again, as a remnant of the crack epidemic, you, you end up with a lot of um, parentless children. And so she was, you know, either watching her sister's kids or her niece's kids, whatever. And... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the uh, Deanna and Chris were asking her, like, um, so, like, what was, what's your ma- biggest goal, like, as far as, like, taking care of these kids? And she's like, probably just making sure they don't get molested. And I was you like, know, yeah. Just, it, <laughs> it takes so much effort. I mean, but and I mean, like, statistically, like, don't make me Google it. Like, I'm no. sure that the numbers are really ridiculous. And they're not, and it, they're not accurate either, because most of the times you just don't report reporting getting, it. You don't really want to, like, deal with the police after you get raped. No, it's you don't. It's not really what you're trying to do. You just want to get on with the rest of your life and hopefully, you know. Well, and especially since, like, especially for... Um, and she didn't even consider herself being raped either. Like, that's she the thought most she was insidious, taking care... Well, that's the most insidious <sighs> thing about, like, uh, predators. Like, it... Because um, I guess there was a, a caseworker who was trying to get him locked up. Yes. But she needed the mother to press charges, and the mom she was like, have. nah. Yeah. And so, you, you know, they... Cause and and then Miss Pat wasn't gonna press charges because she's like that's my boyfriend. Right, I love <laughs> she him. Said that. Yeah, like, that's, that's my boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah. and it's like no, that's... he was twenty two and married and married with a, ch- a seven a month child old and, and she a baby was on the way. And that so... was that was amazing to me. Like it. Do you want to tell that story of when she confronted? I love that story. Was amazing when she oh, confronted Miss uh, Pat. Yeah, she basically came over. So. And I don't know at that point how long they had been dealing with the, with, each, with each other. Maybe well, she like was pregnant. She was fourteen because she was pregnant when the when the she was twelve and then she was thirteen when she gave birth. No, she was thirteen when she was pregnant and fourteen when she gave birth. Okay, so well, regardless, so I think she was still just thirteen when yeah when she was just when pregnant. She, right. So when the yeah when his wife came over. Yeah, she came over basically and knocked on the door and. Um, I think Pat was like, who, you know, trying to, didn't know who she was, and she introduced herself, and she was like, well, I'm basically like, I'm his girlfriend. What are you talking about, his wife, and all of this? So I guess it was like in the middle of the summer, and there was an ice cream truck that came through or whatever. So she was like, you want some ice cream? Takes her to the ice cream truck because she's a whole child, um, and they sit down and they were talking, and she was like, you know, just explaining to her like, yeah, we've been married for this long and, you know, I have another baby on the way. So, you know, of course you're having an abortion. And so, and Miss Pat was like, yeah, she was like, no, I'm not having an abortion though. So it was just, I mean, I, and what was even more crazy was that wasn't the first, I mean, after. Oh, wait, wait, it's not over yet. Cause then he pulls up. Oh, oh my God. I forgot about that. Okay. Let's not forget about the domestic violence. Yes. He pulls up mad at the pregnant wife and smacks her like a pimp. Like literally smacks his pregnant wife for confronting his 13-year-old mistress. Oh, my God. He was a piece of work. And he brought a different girl to the hospital after she gave birth to the baby, to her first baby with him. Showed up with a bitch. Like, are you serious right now? He sure did. I'm like, this man, it's so... I'm sure in his mind, he felt like he was a stand-up guy because he came to the hospital and signed the birth certificate, though. Wow, because the, the bar's low at that point. Because technically, He's I mean, like, you I'm don't know what... like, I'm a stand-up guy. Oh, he I'm, was... I'm just, so great. <laughs> like, and the fact that she doesn't even say, like, she hates him. You know what I mean? Like, she, yeah. I've never really... I mean, not like I've listened to all of her content, but I've never heard her, she heard her say that. She let it go. Because you kind of have to, right? I mean, that's... That's a hard one. I guess because, um, you know, she's grateful for her kids, like her two oldest kids. And yeah. She I, I loved them her, her dedication um, at the end when she, and once again, that was another thing that resonated with me because she talks about with her oldest one when she's asking her to forgive her and stuff for, you know, being taking a, you with me to sell crack. Yeah. And, um, but she was like, you know, we were growing up together. And it's like, I had my son not as young as that, but pretty young. Enough that, like, I wasn't really, I'm a legal adult, but you're not really an adult adult until really 25. Once your brain is done forming. Yeah. And so... You know, she was just like, you know, we 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 had to kind of grow up together and, you know, we raised each, each other, other a yeah, little bit. 100%. And that's not always fair, but it no. is what it is. No, and I think about how different, you know, um, her first set of kids. So, like, she—and um, I don't—yeah, they're, what, like, a year or so apart? 
I don't even think Nikea and Ash. Oh wait, I don't, yeah, Nikia. I don't say their real names. Okay, because yeah, in the book, she uses aliases. Oh, okay. So well, listen to her podcast. She <laughs> talks about them on there, so <laughs> I'm gonna does. assume that I know. Like I used, but, I think yeah. about the because when I was reading it, I was like, wait a minute, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, fake yeah. names, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah. Don't want to get, but I guess her, her a lot of her family did sue. Oh really? I think so. Um, I, I remember hearing that. I didn't read about it, so don't Shut don't up. fact check me or anything like that. But yeah, you know, you, I mean, but it really when you read about it, you kind of be like, okay, I can see how that can. Well, happen. and she was also saying too, a lot of the stories she hadn't like shared with her husband. Her husband and yeah. her have been together for a really long time. Yeah, um, he helped her raise her kids. He's a real one. Their ki- I'm talking about. We need to actually. I should dedicate this episode <laughs> to his ass because you know they try to I act like they're no good Michael black men out the there. Book, but like he's a uh, hey. Uh, he, is He's a, a pillar. One. Do you hear me? And getting up and going to that plant, way to go. I mean, being it's sweet to years. those kids. I mean, when I think about the kind of person you have to be to like, first of all, open up your heart to other people's kids and truly be nice to them. Mm-hmm. Like truly be nice to these kids. And you kids. know they were bad. Oh my God. They were, you know, <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, like it's a culture shock because she always jokes around like, she's like, this nigga had insurance. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. She always talks about her Medicaid kids versus her Blue Cross, Blue Shield kids and stuff like that. And just how... You know, ungrateful her new set of kids are because they're just right. not used to the struggle. Well, and that's amazing, too, because and also, too, out of her new set of kids, her daughter is by far. She's so funny on the podcast. She is really funny. Y'all got to check out. Oh, the pa- I know this is about our podcast, but also <laughs> <laughs> her podcast. It is really hilarious. it is worth noting because she it's so funny. And we relate to her a lot, too, because she went to school like out in Plainfield, Indiana, and those, it's a different type of white, it, there's a big difference between white people who grew up around black people and white people who have not. Yes. And I've been around both, and one is definitely preferable to the other. <laughs> exactly, because. Because it, it is, it's very, very, oh. It's I, trying. I, When she goes off, I, I really, really relate to it. But yeah, um, her husband was, it's it, it's a testament to what an amazing person she is. Absolutely, be, be, yeah. Because he was like, yeah, I, I'm, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm riding right. for you through all this <laughs> shit, you know. And at one point, I think he was like, oh, this is doing, this is too much. <laughs> and she was like, hell no. Nah. Like, <laughs> she threw herself like, in the please. car. Yeah, like <laughs> no, because I mean, and that's just it. Like, you know, she was building this life with him, and I think it's just hard. I think that you know the fact. The so, do you think she was wrong for that? Like, because that was that was kind of like a messed up thing to do. Like, I feel like if my spouse went out and brought home like like was it three or four kids extra kids and we already got a gang of kids I will say that that is something you should probably discuss first (laughs) (laughs) but I just don't think that Miss Pat was in a mind frame where she thought she had that kind of time Mm. and what I can appreciate about her oh sorry just a little backstory this was when her was her sister's kids were getting taken away by the state and they were like if you don't come now they're going into foster care right and then for people who don't know about the foster care system and I don't I, I don't personally know, but you know what I'm saying from, from personal experience, read, but yeah, it's not great. It's not something you want to necessarily, and, and the fact, too, that it would have split, I think it was three of them, and it would have okay. split the kids up, too. Yeah. So she wanted to keep them together and well, also. Well, let's see. So to answer your question, do I think it was wrong for her to do that? Um, again, I just feel like she was going off her instincts, like she had been all that time. And survival is probably her utmost concern at that point. And the thought of leaving her kids, you know, again, like if her highest aspiration is for her kids not to be molested, you know that, you know what I mean? Like the likelihood of that happening when you break up kids and put them in foster homes, a lot of those folks, I mean, and there's some good ones out there, but there's some bad ones. And so do you really want to roll the dice? Um, So it could have been handled different, but I just, I don't. I mean, I don't falter for it. No, for sure. But I think that. I just appreciate the fact that she was able to, um, you know, take her circumstance and really turn it around. Because, like, when you come from, gener- like, when you talk about generational curses, people say that or have that phrase. Um, I mean, she was an eighth grade education. Nobody in her family had even graduated. Oh, wait, can we talk about that story at school when she got in trouble for eating that girl sandwich? Oh, my God. That part, like, that that was was one of the parts where I had to, like, kind of put the book down for a minute and, like, cry a little. Because I was so mad at that. Okay, so what the story (laughs) was, you know, we've already established her mother, you know, single mom, five kids, poor in the South. She, She went to school hungry a lot. 
And shout out to the Black Panthers for starting the school lunch program so that kids don't have to start their school day off hungry. But like this was before, you know, that came to Atlanta. So or not Atlanta. She was like in the outskirts of Georgia, I think. But she was she went to school hungry one day and she was late and her teacher was like, what did she say? She was being a bitch. She was like, yeah, she was like, I mean, little did this teacher know for calling me out, like how much I hated being late, because first of all, I, this was the only chance that I had to eat like actual food. Right. And, not, like, a ketchup and so sandwich. like, and once again, so they're poor. So her clothes are raggedy. She smells. She's already getting made fun of by the other kids. She's hungry. Right. So she's in the coat closet and she sees one of the other kids lunch and opens it. And she was just going to take a bite. But I don't know if you've ever started eating when you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's so real. And then as a child too, hunger is so oh unbearable. Like I can be hungry now. Like, but when you're little, like hunger and boredom are the worst. My kids act like they're going to fall out. You just ate like two hours ago. You know My what I daughter mean? was straight up telling me, you're not going to feed your children? Right. It's like, girl, get out of here. Scram. <laughs> you are fine. But yeah, it was, it was heartbreaking, but it was funny because, and that's what I like about this book, is that she's talking about some real heavy stuff. Like she's talking about, um, I think that if she wasn't the person she was and she wasn't as funny as she is, it would be a hard book to read because it would be like, it'd be your sister's damn. book. Pro- you know what I mean? Like it was, it's, it's a lot and it's heavy, but she uses so the humor to kind of like break it up because I mean, I just think about the way she described the sandwich and stuff and she didn't like the little girl who's um, lunchbox. <laughs> She said, I saw a little fucking smurf <laughs> lunchbox up there. She was like, I don't know that bitch had that fluffy ass white bread, bread with the, and the, the mayo and, cheese, and the yeah. ham and all that stuff. And, you know, but to, fe- yeah, like I've never had to. And I'm sure she, and, and, and knowing that. like if that little girl was probably, you know, once again, well taken care of, then she's probably like my kids who just complain exactly. and probably just like, ugh, ham sandwich again. And right. To Miss Pat, that was a succulent like, feast. I will. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? It's like I had a ketchup sandwich for uh, like dinner last night. Oh, so, so sad. But the, what was even more heartbreaking was when the teacher caught her or whatever. And sent her to, like, took and her to the principal's her office. The principal didn't ask her, so Patricia, what happened? You know what I mean? Like Nothing. what's going on? On. They're like, just like, you're you? a piece of shit and, and you steal. And gave her a Yeah, and beat her. <laughs> and it's crazy. I mean, that's crazy, too. And I mean, just to say And just to remind, just for the younger listeners out there, like, they used to be able to beat you in school. I got beat in school. Oh, I never did. But oh, I got knew beat that in that, school? Hell, no. Nah. Oh, good for you. No, nah, I don't think my mom would have went for that. I don't think oh. she would have let a random person hit me at school. And daycare, I definitely got hit with rulers. <gasps> Matter of fact, she pulled me out of preschool. Oh, okay. Because... Oh my God. And this was a well, Christian. Well, that's when they hit everybody, though. And it wasn't even a Christian school. It was just a regular-ass daycare. It was just all black. And they would, yeah, like, there would be times when everybody was acting up, everybody get whooped. Nah. But they wouldn't hit me that hard. They knew I was good. Like, I'd get, like, hit light. But I'm still getting hit. No. The only time I remember getting a spanking at school, it was preschool, and it was a Christian preschool. And... The, lunch, the It was three of us. We were waiting for our parents to come get us. We were playing Ring Around the Rosie. I rem- and you know I don't remember shit. You don't. I don't <laughs> fucking remember anything. I barely she remember what happened remember last much. weekend. Okay? So the fact that I remember this so, so vividly. <laughs> the trauma marked it. Yes. Because I remember the little boy James, he fell, hit his knee, and like me and this other girl were looking at his knee, and the... They, it was like mother such and such. Like everybody was like mother or sister or whatever. And she came in. What are y'all in here doing? Man. Yeah, what are y'all in here doing? Like nothing. Like he fell. We was looking at his knee like trying to see what happened. You know, she was like, y'all was in here kissing, wasn't y'all? Uh, I was like, hell how no. How dare you? No, I wasn't kissing this little dusty dude. Like, <laughs> no. I got boys like gross, Ew. you know. But um, she was like, Coaching us into telling a lie. Like, basically, like, mm. I know that's what y'all were doing. I know that. Tell me, it, it, well, if you tell me the truth, that then you can go in here. That stuff yes. they try to do. Mm-hmm. Then you can play with the toys, and you can mm-hmm. go in here and stuff. It's so, like, nothing will happen if you just tell me. Lies. Like, if you just tell me, it, you'll be fine. It, you'll, you'll be great. Just oh my go God. ahead, tell me. Listen, what? I was so just upset. Tell me. I wouldn't lie. I was like, no, I didn't do that. Like, how are <laughs> you going to make me say it? it? Principle. No, I'm it's not like, doing that. So then the little girl lied. He... The boy didn't lie, so we had to. See, we got a whooping with a switch. Had to stand in the fucking corner. Damn, they were using switches. And this bitch was in there. Yeah, she was in there playing mm. and shit, having a good old time. And I told my mom, she snatched me the fuck out of there. Good, and that's, she knew. and that's why I fucked with her mom. Yeah, too. <laughs> like, because she's like, we don't have time for this. I was like, because because that's only gonna get worse. Yes. Ooh. And I mean, if you can't, you know what? You should see if we fall out. Because there's like see these. What? Well, no, because like there's these kind of like blanket class class action class action lawsuits you can file against like religious organizations now. Man, they've been closed. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a new one. Like this is. I'm talking like, about the one that I went to. You talking about me suing them? But I mean, 
if it was a Catholic, it's archdiocese, right? No, hell no. Wait, oh, Catholic? I don't oh. think it was. Did I say Catholic? If I said you Catholic. You said mother something or like it was sister something. Nope, nope. They were like black people. Oh, just regular. And they, right. No, Never and they mind. weren't. That's yeah. not, you're not going to get anything. So Sorry. I'm not getting shit. They've been <laughs> dissolved a long time ago. <laughs> Sorry. They've been gone. Sorry for the false hope. Yeah, no, it was some kind of, I don't even remember the de- denomination of Christianity they were, but it was some fuck shit. I mean, they yeah, all, you know, that Yeah, that was messed up, the fact that you have to be hungry and get your ass beat. Like, once again, it was just reminding me how resilient Miss Pat is. Yes, and the fact that she was able to, like, so this is what I was going to say before, like, um, turn that circumstance, like, to be the first person to turn out of a situation. So she had... Um, her husband kind of supporting her at that time, too, yeah. and encouraging her to make different choices. But just how hard that is when you don't see the blueprint, you don't see the prototype, Um because she sold crack. I mean, like, she was a legit crack dealer. Like, she took her last Oh, and uh, once it, another thing she got from her baby daddy. Like, the... Oh, yeah, because yeah. he was selling he crack. He was selling crack, got locked up because he was worse at it. Like, she was actually better at selling crack Yeah, she was really was. good. That's what I was thinking. But like, once again, <laughs> it's because she wasn't... Te- what? what? Everyone's shameless. I feel like that sounds familiar. I it's, don't know. It's a popular show. Whatever. One of the kids on there, he was trying, he was basically too, d- people think it's easy to sell drugs. Like, he couldn't do math. And it's, well, if you can't do math, you, I'm sorry, you should see Moni's face. If you she got can't so do upset. math. It's like, what do you mean you can't do math? Math? Yeah, he was constantly getting ripped off and stuff because it's like, yeah, this, dummy. Duh, yeah, this yeah, is dummy. Yeah, it's not for math. you, sir. This is not, this is not for you. you definitely Handle it. Be. But because she could hold everything in her mind, she was able to, yeah, she, it was basically Basically, just a what is it a story problem? But basically, and I liked the theme throughout her life too, where you know at some point there was always somebody that kind of stepped in to try to put her up on game. Oh, because what was the name of the teacher? She used to say with the bad bitch boots. I forgot her name. I, but once she was, again, I, I for when I loved her description of this woman because the fact that she even remembered her hairstyle, like she just described how she this smelled woman. and everything. This was a um because she said like the the bitch ass teacher who uh, took her to the principal's office for being hungry, basically and eating that girl's lunch. She was talking about she didn't learn anything in her class. She learned from like the special ed teacher who who was this black woman who apparently dressed very well because she remembered her bad bitch booth. I remember thinking, because I could picture, she's so good at, like, once again, such a good read because she paints such a vivid picture with her words. And she was talking about how this woman would actually, um, like, wash her clothes for her and do her hair. That warmed my heart. Yeah, that was was a nice part. Because she was, and told her, like, Patricia, you know you can be anything you want to be, right? And she was like, yeah. You know, but she, but, like, she was just saying, like, the fact that she remembered that and like maybe other people wouldn't have remembered that but she remembered that that there was somebody who actually did take some time out and gave a fuck about her and put some energy in her and how she didn't get her ass whooped that one day because she had done her hair because yeah. oh, it's I hard know. out here it's like you get your ass whooped for not having your hair done well here's the thing you're targeted you know what I'm yeah. saying that's what's even sadder because like people know no one's going to come after me your no. mama's not going to come after me she didn't she even do your hair. hair she didn't do your, car- your coats dirty yeah you know what I'm saying like, like I know I can completely prey on you and nothing will happen to me and right. so and and once again, that's probably the same attitude her baby daddy had. A hundred percent. Because she was, he was able to show up at her house. Like, yeah. And, yeah, and her mom was like, some boy's here to see you. Some boy. It's like, mm. oh my God, that is just But so she gross. did say that she didn't look 12, but that's still never an excuse. But see, let's she talk was about like, because she was then. a whole 12 year old. She was like, you could talk to me and know I was 12. I was a whole 12 year old. But that's the thing, though. I almost feel like that gives people feel like that's an excuse, you know, to yeah. treat, to over sexualize like young black Kelly women. Tape. I remember yeah. when that was going on and like the tape and the DVDs were being sold at the barbershops and people were saying that. Like, so she looked like she liked it. And first off, but that Fuck was even the thing, too, because I mean, I'm guilty of watching it like everybody else. I didn't but, see it. Oh, I swear to God, I, I never did see that. I've always been curious. So I saw it. And once again, like she, to me, she looked young. Like to me, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like women's patches. There are, I, I know what they're talking about. Like girls who are like, there are very girls developed. Who look like they're older than me. Yeah. That are in like middle Stat. school. Bigger. You know Completely. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for like, sure. from head to toe. And so I get that. But the girl on that tape was not. I mean, here's she the looked thing. like she looked like it a doesn't solid. matter if and I have double matter, D's right. or anything. All it would take is a conversation, and so like any man who's talking to a twelve year old because she has big titties and a fat ass, you would be able to know right away. Like she's twelve, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like unless, of course, you're functioning at a twelve year old level, well, which she is said why he you sucked like him. his thumb. Yeah, he. Oh my god. <laughs> She said he used to suck his thumb. And he probably, once again, because now, like, looking back on R. Kelly and stuff, like, back in the day, I 
loved R. Kelly. I mean, loved him. And once again, like, probably because, like, that was his market. Like, yeah, when I was 12, 12 player, are you kidding me? Like, that was... My body's uh, calling. calling. <laughs> I mean, but it was like, your lover, I mind. Mean. Telling me no. <laughs> it's like, but my keeps, body. Yeah. But he, but like, now, it's like, now that you know, like, he's illiterate, a little slow. Like, listen <laughs> to him like talk, like, doing feels. the interviews and stuff and be like, okay, so you're just good at one thing. And so people just assume, like, you're good. Well, here's the thing, too, though. When people are getting something from you, though, right? Because, I mean, some of these things went undetected or un you know, announced or, you know, wasn't put to the forefront because it's like you're having some sort of financial gain. Yeah. So you're willing to put your person in harm's way because it benefits you in some way. So that shit right there is And once again, like, just like the guy who first molested her and the sister, like, the mama basically just let him do it because he'd bring groceries around and talk to her. Oh, my God. That was really fucked up. And then (laughs) you give them both $5 not to say anything. And he pretty much told them, like, yeah, y'all talk about this. And that means that I can't come and bring groceries. um, And your mom will get put out, you know, of the house. Because they were moving, like, every 90 days. Like, they couldn't even keep their lights and gas on. She said we very rarely, like, had hot water. It was always one or the other. So, yeah, it was just really sad. So you're using that to control these young girls and manipulate them into thinking, oh, you're helping your family. Right. And also when there are things around sex, because I um, I had a guy friend tell me the other day about how when he was younger, he had a babysitter that showed her, that showed him her titties. And what? He, <laughs> how old was he? I don't remember. Young enough to need a babysitter. And oh, my so God. He was like... I'm going to beat your ass. Let me find out. it was the immediate thing of, like, where he was afraid to say something because he thought he would get in trouble. Like, 100%. Because, of course, he enjoyed it. He was like, titties. You know, like, like, nice. I, I didn't hate yeah, those. <laughs> like, that was great. That was but right. it's like, but at the same time, you know, like, uh... I don't think my baby should be flashing me her titties. Right. And then, too, you're almost like, you know, I kind of like her. She showed me her titties. I don't want her to get in trouble, necessarily. Like, I know it's inappropriate, <laughs> but we're walking the line here. Like, I mean... It's like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? <laughs> I just think it's really unfair to put young people in those, those situations. situations. Exactly. And, and it's grown so people. It's like, sad. if you want... It's like, just play with somebody you're on there's age. plenty of degenerate like there's, there's a slow ass 22 year old that'll let you fuck like you just you know what I mean leave your kids alone the shit is just it's unnecessary and I guess it's she was so saying too up. he had just recently had a baby too uh, he. I think I heard her say he's got 22 kids now Jesus. on some interview. Might that have been like be on illegal. the Breakfast Club or like, something. Like, why isn't somebody stopping him? Why isn't there never a superhero Listen. for that? Oh my god I heard her talking about because she was even saying about, like, you know, um, she was talking about abortion or something, but also just being like, why don't they just clip the balls? <laughs> like, just, like, but, like, why aren't we having campaigns and Where is Captain people lobbying? Me out Where here? is he at? We need him. Uh, sniff them best deference in this please. bitch. Like, that actually should be our factory setting. Like, you should have to have a procedure to be able to produce. Listen, reproduce. Who, like, the it only thing be the with default. that kind of thing is... It just shows we're not designed well. Well, but then who gets to decide that? Like, that's the only thing that ends up being fucked up about that. Cause but I mean, if that's just how we came, like, like if that wasn't even a, like if just the factory I agree, setting, because I always thought, let me turn this period off. I'm not gonna need yeah, this. Yeah, like I'm if there was a factory set, like the like the thing at the bottom of the toilet that turns the water off. Yeah, like just if there turn was it just off. A, like it. turn that like righty tighty lefty <laughs> Lucy, and then yeah, I don't, I'm not using this. So. Yeah. It's like we're on righty tighty right now, but yeah, that's that's really unfortunate that he's still out here um, sliding, making people sliding, and, and then you know, again, just going back to Miss Pat's like uh, husband, the fact that they're still together, they're still raising kids. Because whose kids does she have now? I think those are her niece's kids. So these are the kids that, because her, her her sister, and the, once again, this is all too familiar, because once again, this is a very familiar story to me because this happened to my grandmother. She took in my, she took in her niece's daughter because her, this wasn't the crack epidemic though. This was during the heroin epidemic. So um, her niece was strung out on crack. So she took in her daughter, had her for years because she was the same um, age as my uncle. And mm. so, you know, once again, you know, grandma, she's just raising Bring kids. That's in. her right. MO. And then a couple years later, she came back and was like, yeah, basically, I'm going to need this kid if I'm going to keep getting welfare. So she's coming with me. Right. And what can you do? Nothing. She never formalized the 
the adoption or anything like that. So you, and that was the part that was really heartbreaking too when she had to let go of the kids. kids. She had them for some years too. Exactly. Once again, this is a real mm -hmm. parallel and it's like so heartbreaking and her husband had to be like, listen, you you have to let them go with their mother. And so though one of those kids that she had to give back she has her kids. Okay. Right now. Right. And so she calls them the crack baby. <laughs> She's so <laughs> delightful. <laughs> Absolutely delightful. She is silly. But like she said, her kids were the first ones in their family to graduate from high school. Yeah, man. Um, which was beautiful. Like there is there's a lot of sadness, but there's a lot of triumph in this book. I would, I don't know. Would you recommend this? Listen, I would highly recommend this book. Um, it's a it's a really well-told story. It's full of details. You won't be disappointed. I feel like there's just, I mean, there's so much. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's heart-wrenching. Did you have a favorite um, part? Um, man, here you go with this, man. God. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, or a least favorite part? It was. Well, I mean, I think all the grooming. Out. I think this, all the sexual abuse, like all of that fuck shit. A lot of it. All of that is just, it's sickening to me. And I, and it's, it was almost like the baseline. It was it almost was just like a baseline. course. Like it was almost oh, like inescapable. Wait a minute. We didn't even talk about the fact she's got she was shot a couple times. Like her baby daddy <laughs> shot her. She her shot her nipple shot. Bust off. her nipple <laughs> out. Man, how I mean and that's again that again shows like a mark of an incredible life where you forget the times a person got shot. It's like, oh yeah, she was shot it a was couple a, times. Yeah. And survived. So I mean survived. she's Well, just she got survivor. shot in the head the one time mm-hmm. in the crack Doctor's shootout. Goal. Yeah, in the just just a street shootout and then her baby daddy. Oh, and then she said he hit him, hit her with the pistol, and then it went off. Yeah, it was pistol whipping, and then left her there though. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's real classic. I'm sure he had warrants. Man, that's not. Or and even the one woman she was talking about that she used to leave her stash with, like the guy, the one guy she went into business with, his mother. Oh yeah. And about how she had like like a peg leg because her husband had shot her in the foot. See, I don't remember that. Oh, (laughs) I remember her mom having the. The teeth. The leg. No, because remember... Oh, her mom the, had to be in a wheelchair. Yeah, she, her mom. Yeah, she stepped on that nail. No, she this was a woman... Oh, yeah, this was a woman who... Um, it was just like a, she talked about how she walked with a limp because her husband oh, yeah, had yeah, yeah, yeah. shot her in the foot and she said it was an accident, but she's like, but I'm pretty much so sure like, that's what eh. you say when, you know, the person who shot you sleeps next to you. Exactly. Like, you that's can't. the thing. It's just, it's so sad, though. It's just so sad, the cycles that get repeated in a community and how, like, something like crack was allowed to thrive in black communities, you know, during that time. And at the same time, that provided her with an opportunity to take care of her kids, you know, financially, but how it contributed to, you know, the downfall. Because I like how she got out of it. She was like, I couldn't pretend like this wasn't hurting people. Yeah, like you saw the, your sister was on it. I'm sure it's a lot different. And that's the thing. When it's you, it's different. When it's somebody you know and it affects you personally, the shit hits different. Like, it just does. So... Um, yeah, and the so, fact, too, that that uh, was a big part. Once again, like, we should just, I'm changing the dedication. Dedication goes out to Miss <laughs> Pat's husband for hey. getting her out the life, getting her out of doing grimy stuff. I loved it when she was talking. Whenever Miss Pat has interactions with white people. It's hilarious, though. She's that's, funny. That's my favorite part. I love when she talks about talking to her racist neighbors. Um, but in the book, when she was talking about when she went to um, school to be a um, uh, medical assistant. Yes. And was working at that place for a while. And she... I guess she's incapable of doing the fake stuff that you have to do to. I, I don't know. Which about, I can like, appreciate ask your question, that. Moni, do you do you have to do fake shit to? Oh, of course, to survive your job. Oh God, yes. yes. Okay, uh-huh. I wasn't sure. I wanted yeah, to yeah. ask. Yep. And I could see how, like, living a life like she did, how you just don't have time the for that. Yeah, that's a fucking luxury to be able to, you know, uh, read social cues and figure out what the fuck. I mean, like. <laughs> I mean, maybe to some degree she's doing that to to discern whether or not people are, you know, trying to rob her or whatever the fuck. But, yeah, there's a certain level of, um, you know, there's she doesn't have a facade. She like, can't she's code so switch. Genu- no, she there's is no genuinely herself. Like, you you get with it, you get with the program. She's going to yeah. be herself. So I, I code like switch that. a lot. I like that. I code it's, a, it's a skill, you know what I mean? But I but think it's if you don't learn it early, you don't. Yeah. You had to. You had to code switch. You went to a white-ass school. I did. Growing up, I, I did, did too, so... That wasn't her experience. She was like, I didn't even see And actually, white folks. sometimes it's really great being white on the phone. I get much better customer service. <laughs> okay. It's like, and Everybody has the white voice. White y'all, sounding y'all know name. about that. And like, it's, y'all know. Once again, y'all it, it. it's proof it exists because I'm like, I'm, I'm treated so much better on there the phone. There was a whole last movie about the white voice. Oh, yeah. With, um, Sorry to bother Lakeith, you. Uh, yeah. What, yeah. Lakeith, <laughs> Lakeith, is that his name? Lakeith. Yeah. What's his last name? I just call him the weird dude from Atlanta. I like him. I do too. I like, <laughs> I like him a him. lot. He's really talented. He is. Shout out to you, sir. 
Yeah, but yeah, so, I just don't want to get your name wrong. No, I will. Yeah, I don't remember. I think we covered He's this so earlier. He's so good at being a character, God. though. I don't even need to know his real name. Man, like, where is Atlanta? I need that to come back. It's not. Where are you at? I don't think you don't so. think it's coming back? I don't think so. Okay. I don't feel like he is doing Is Donald Glover the Donald Glover I don't Glover know what the hell still? that man's doing, but you know what? I guess I'll just I'm, take what I'm I got grateful. and be grateful for that. I'm grateful. So. But yeah, so, um, yeah, in summation, I feel like that was a really good book. Um, Rabbit, you guys check it out. Again, it's a really easy read. Um, quick, and I think they have it on audiobook too. I think I, I paid know, for this I on Amazon. Tried, it's like two bucks. I, I got it on Kindle for uh, two ninety nine. Well, look at that. She, she had to come <laughs> out here and cut my throat. But, but. Um, I didn't. I couldn't find the audible version. But there is an audible version. I just didn't is look hard enough. It? Yes. <gasps> so I'm, I think I'm gonna go back and oh buy it so I oh, can yeah. hear her reading it. Because once again, I love her voice. She has a great tone. Bro. She is hilarious. You yeah, guys. she is so funny, and her story is. It's just super real, and I, you know I fucks with that. I like I like her genuine. She's just herself. She yeah. you know, and Miss Pat. She was quite lovely, smart, and just a survivor. So yeah, you guys check out Miss Pat's book, um, Rabbit, when you get a chance. And um, yeah, we're um, we're winding down. This was a wonderful journey through Miss Pat's world. I'm really happy for her. Like it's one of those things where I like I really want to see her win. She's got a show, TV show coming out. Yeah, she does. Um, I think it's going to be on Hulu. I think um, I we were just so. talking about that. On the back of the book, it says that it's with um, Lee Daniels and 20th Century Fox. But I think it's when been I was, in a lot of different. Yeah, hands. It's been, right. And I think now it landed with Hulu and I think she's actively like getting ready to start um, recording for her show. So it yeah, just shout out to you, man. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and Tammy's in I, it from yeah. real world. Oh, is she? Yeah, she plays her sister on the oh, show. Oh, shit. D- see, this is what it happens this. when you talk too much, because I was talking to somebody about this. I assumed it was you. It was obviously it someone me. else. <laughs> it was not me. <laughs> I've been cheating on you with other friends. Listen, I'm. A, you know what? I allow that, actually. <laughs> I encourage that. <laughs> so sorry. Because I'm one of them people like, please don't let me be the only one. God damn. Like, spread that shit out. I don't right. like the clinginess of just, you know, so that's beautiful. Yes. I'm glad you got to share that with someone. <laughs> okay, well, now I'm sharing okay. it with you. Thank yeah, you. Tammy from uh, The Real, Real World is playing her sister. Listen, and we're old enough to have remembered her being well, I'm on sorry. the and fucking also, show. And also, Tammy from... Uh, the Real House. Why? No, no, no Basketball Wives. Sorry, I got my... Basketball... It was Basketball Messy Wives, Messy black right? uh, reality show uh, mixed up. Yeah, it was Basketball Wives, okay. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Apparently, she's very good on it. Um, no, I'm a motherfucking enjoyed, factor. Listen, I've enjoyed mm-hmm. everything Tammy's been in. Tammy's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so I, that should be in it. I mean, I can't wait to check it out. I definitely want to stream and support her. I mean, even if I didn't want, like, just stream it. So I she want can it get to the, be like the, the new Cosby show. Because she was talking about how, like, basically sitcoms like this don't even exist anymore. It's like, true. you kind of, maybe with Blackish, you see it a little bit with Blackish, but Blackish is still kind of outlandish a little bit. Because, like, who's really living like that? True like that. seeing and, and really the Cosby show was like that but then too. Some people might look at Miss Past Life and be like, "Who's really living like but that?" But I mean, a lot of people are I, living like I that. I know, but it's not. You know, I guess on both ends of the spectrum, like it, it feels a little bit probably closer to what an, an average person would experience. You know what I mean? Because even I remember watching the Cosby Show being a young kid. Not I don't know no. Who, what black physicians are li- like? I didn't know anybody who lived like that. And actually, I, this, is a, this is my major critique with the Cosby Show. I don't really have any. I, I, I still watch the Cosby Show. Cosby I, I'm, I'm very. It's very sad what happened. What Bill did to those women that was terrible. But it's still a good show. Show's good. But what it didn't represent accurately was the fact that they would have had to have a housekeeper. Like, there's no way in the world both of them could have two high-powered jobs, five kids. Like, they, you never saw anybody doing laundry. Like, that would have been... You don't think about how <laughs> much... You don't have that, that many part. people in your house. How much time do you spend doing laundry? First of all, do you understand how there's two loads chilling on my couch <laughs> waiting for me to get home? And I still actually have to leave here, fry some Korean fried no. chicken for my husband today, okay? And I still have two loads of laundry to fold. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, I do feel like it doesn't necessarily capture the real Claire essence. would have had a hair. She would have had to... And Claire and Cliff would have had to have uh, probably some more nannies, than one... A couple of nannies, yeah. More than one housekeeper. Most and for as people, clean as that house was. And most of the people low-key that I know that live in, in New York who are successful, trust me, they do have nannies. Yeah. They actually have nannies. They look at me being a Midwesterner like, bitch, you take... So you do everything? <laughs> like, yes. This is why... Listen, I'm... Yes, I'm yes, struggling out yes. here in these streets. And I mean, so that's, sometimes my mom helps, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, but that's why this isn't... But my mom know? still has a job, so yeah, I'm still mostly doing the stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like that was the biggest problem with um, the Cosby show, but other than that. But like, I do like to see black sitcoms with just black people 
normal. Having a black experience. Yeah, like, I don't, and, like, not everybody's going to be black excellence. Like, no, not everybody's going to have, be, like, I can't be a physician. I mean, that's true, too. <laughs> I, but I, what I do think, though, is that, you know, there's some, you know, like, I don't always want to be represented like a Medea character either. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? Why like, I wanted to be, I'm just saying, you know how I feel about we didn't Tyler even, Perry. We weren't even talking about I'm that. I'm just saying, because I'm just thinking about the things that you see that are out there. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, as far as what gets represented in, in black I don't, media I don't see myself like reflected so, in the Tyler Perry universe. No, not really. I mean, it, again, to each his own, I do think but big that Miss Pat Tyler deserves Perry, I don't her want to smoke. I love you down, Tyler Perry. Um, him personally, he's lovely. He creates jobs. He does all that. I mean, the, you know, all of that now. His art that he creates is a matter of taste. I'm not commenting on that. I think um, everything's great. So don't everybody, listen to Moni. No, it's listen. I, what did I say? I just, I, listen, I'm not about to be Keep listening. writing all your own stuff. It's great. Okay. Well, somebody likes it. So there's that. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> Again, there's something for everybody. So, But, but, I my just point like, being, but honestly, I don't feel myself represented in a lot of the stuff he produces even though I might find it entertaining yeah, I don't sure. find it necessarily reflective of my experience in America no for sure but I, I am excited for her to have this opportunity and it's super cool so um and she deserves Ms. She Pat, you deserve does, man listen she no deserves, one tells I mean, you still well, did you ever listen to the one podcast she had where she was talking about getting into therapy that's my biggest no. thing that I love the most about listening to these podcasts is when like my favorite podcaster goes to therapy what <laughs> <laughs> no it's always the best because no, because she never did either. Well, to be honest, though, like podcasting is a type of therapy. Like it's talk therapy for an hour. We're about to. I love this. I do too. I need you to understand Plank. that. Cheers, because <laughs> this is literally like an but, hour or so to to like you say it's a meditation. Like we get to be in a, in somebody else's universe. We get to experience somebody else's story, and you know, it, and it takes you down a lot of roads. So it's nice because you're stepping outside of yourself. And um, giving yourself the space to just, you know, like, I, I guess for us, this is just like an opportunity to not be somebody's mom right now, somebody's, you know, wife or girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever. Like, you can just, we can be in the moment. We can share a story. We can have a drink, which I'm certainly having right now. This is Yeah. Um, what did, what would you call this? This I was a nice concoction. This is um, I, It's nothing I've never, it was kind of like a mimosa, but like instead of juice, we use Saint Germain. That's real fancy, yes. I was going to say Saint Germain. It's but that's it's Saint, 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 Saint. That's like French. That's how they keep, they know who's who because they have so many insane rules. They have more insane rules than the English do about how like you pronounce stuff. And it's just so they know who's an outsider. It's terrible. Okay, wow. But they well, never I've pronounce, never you never pronounce the last like consonant or sound of any word in French. Oh, okay. See, that's, Unless the French. next word starts with a vowel. Okay, goodbye. Now we're not about to uh, <laughs> geek the fuck out <laughs> talking about but French. But since the next word uh, is Germain, you don't time. pronounce the T. So it's Saint just Germain. Saint so we got some Saint Germain, Germain and some no champagne. <laughs> and it was <laughs> mixed together in a cute little cup. And mix it all together. We'll call it Miss Pet. Yeah, man. That's what's up. So yeah, cheers to her. Because it's bubbly and she deserves no but her episode when she was talking about therapy and like working stuff out because obviously what she's been through like we don't recognize it as trauma. Like a lot of times, we just see ourselves oh, as she's failing. A strong black woman. But uh. like you, you don't see the the damage that's done until you look back and be like, well, "God damn!" Yeah, I mean, even she said that. Yeah, like, and like, so damn. when she's going back now and she's talking about now, like some stuff she doesn't feel like she deserves. So I want to put that out there, Miss Pat. You deserve, you deserve like it more. All, sis. Whatever you think you deserve, you deserve even more. Yeah. Except for that husband. You nailed that. <laughs> good job. <laughs> she, that. she spotted him from a mile away. Yeah, good job. Hey, that was that was the right move. Yeah, man. So, um, okay, so the, it is almost the end of the show. We're still mm-hmm. talking about it. Also, so let's just spin the wheel. So we're going to spin the wheel. Yeah. Um, it's the end of the show. This is how we decide what the next it's book It's hard to decide. There's so many good books out there. Read. Yes. At some point, we are going to read something by somebody else than a black women, woman. Okay, yeah. But at this point, we're... What I don't know about women? you. When you when I was in school having to read books, we had to read a lot of, like, it's stale, pale mail. Wow. <laughs> um. So Ooh. now, it's like when I get to choose what we read. Oh, yay! So I'm so glad it landed on You'll Never Believe What Happened to Lacey, a New York Times bestseller, crazy stories about racism between Amber Ruffin, love her... Do you watch her show? I do. Not all the time I've seen it, though. Me and my daughter are obsessed with that show. Because once again, my daughter goes to a predominantly white school, and I went to a predominantly white school. We share our crazy racism stories together. So we can bond over racist stories. Sorry, there goes the Miss Pat. Mm. That's talking. But um, it was nice to listen, because I I bought the—it's just really fun to— 
share stories about racism. So I'm looking forward to getting into this <laughs> so I can like, because because we do this. Like you, yeah, we you've, do. you've done this to me. Like, because you, you have to deal with more racist people than I do now. So yes, on a true. daily basis and, or, and a lot of times you, sometimes you just have to unload. It's like, I have to talk about this because this was so crazy. So yeah. I feel like this will be very cathartic. Yes. I'm excited. This is, I do enjoy her. She seems really smart and funny. So I can't wait to enjoy her book and share and that she's with really you guys. The only one, so. Like, cause she has a late night show. I don't know any other black women with their own, like kind of late night show. Is it yeah, it's on Peacock? Okay. Yeah. But it's on the free version of Peacock, like okay. not the platform you have to pay for. And then also, too, like you usually just watch the clips on YouTube. True that. But yeah, so check. Yeah, we'll, we'll check her book out and then we'll get back with you guys and we'll. Yeah, we'll let you know nice, if it's worth, yeah. worth reading. If you yes. don't have time to read it, we'll talk to you about it. I know, right? So, all right, guys. So this has been it for the Fake Ass Book Club. Thanks this for joining good. us again. Good talk. Good talk. And we'll see you guys next time. Holla. Yes, thank you. Bye. Before we go, we must give thanks to our sound engineer, Eric Dizzy from Dorian Keith Media, to Urban Nerd for providing our music, Buzz Viral Marketing runs our social media, and legal services were handled by Trazen A. M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake-ass book club. Cheers. Cheers! Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com. Please subscribe rate and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now we want to hear from you come put it in our life thanks again and until next time peace love and the fake ass book club we out